for every reader, writer, or watch, and welcome to another video on the Owen Williams Stories channel. Today is my first ever top 10. I'm sorry if this uploads accidentally on Monday, that's my bad sign. And today I'm going to look at the top 10 books for parents to read their little kids. Now, the reason that I'm doing this is I'm going to do a series of these. So, top 10 books for parents to read their little kids, top 10 books for little kids to read for the first time, top 10 books for slightly bigger kids to read for the first time, and top 10 books for like 9 to 13 so also read for the first time and top 10 young adult fiction books and adult fiction books like that don't worry um Panda Hall isn't part of that it's just that's it. let's just move on number 10 Harry and McClary show business now this actually is just kind of for the entire Harry and McClary show it's the only series that's on this list really. basically what the part of this book is is Harry and McClary decides to join a cat competition and everything goes horribly wrong this book make, makes a lot of young children laugh and actually made me laugh the first time I saw it it's a really good book, full with a lot of funny and interesting moments that will sure to make uh, any little kid smile and, well, hopefully be happy, but you never know. Number nine, Hug. Why do these books have to be so big? Hug is a really nice book about a little monkey named Bobo. The plot is that he's trying to go and find someone to give him a hug. However, all the animals in the forest can't give him hugs because they're not monkeys. Until suddenly, I'll just let you read that book to find out, don't I? I'm not a spoiler. This is a really nice book showing about family and care, and hopefully it will like, well, almost definitely will make you feel like good inside. Like I read it like an hour ago, and made me feel very good inside. So I really hope you guys do enjoy this book as well. I sort of feels like I'm kind of rushing through this all, but I really don't have much time to record this, and I'm very excited to do my first ever top ten. So hug is also a great sort of book. number eight. Oh, the places you'll go. My goodness, I need a better recording setup. All oh, the places you'll go is one of the is a book by Dr. Zoys or Dr. Zoys, however you want to pronounce it, I don't really care. It's a really nice book that shows kids a lot of really cool ways that they can explore the world. It inspires them to really go out and explore. And after reading this book, I was outside for weeks trying to find places like this. Sadly, I couldn't find them. So sad. However, it's a really nice book that really makes you feel happy. And it has some sad parts, but it's probably one of the longer books that we have on the list. But it's still an absolutely great book. Number six, I took the moon for a walk. This is a beautiful book about friendship. In it, a boy, I don't know if you get the name, takes the moon for a walk around his town. I think this is a really beautiful book because, like, you don't really think of a moon as something to walk, and it really installs magic into it. It's a very sweet book, not really much of a um, gripping plot, but, well, it is great gripping on your little child, but it's a really nice book about friendship and love and the beauty of the natural world. So I really think, I re again, I, I recommend every single book in this series, but I'm kind of learning out of things to say about this. So hopefully you guys um, will like it too. I remember I really enjoyed it when I was a little kid. It's a great book and um, it's actually written by two people, which I'm not sure if I'm excited about all of us. Anyway, fact number nine is Howl and the Purple Crayon. Sorry that I'm, yeah, that is. Okay. This is a really nice book about a boy who's just trying to find his home. And he draws this incredible city that really makes me feel like, well, when I was looking, it made me feel very safe to know about this really nice city. This is a very good book, and in this video, I'm pretty sure I have to say this, all lights go to the authors of these books. Like, I didn't buy any of these, don't I? Okay, continuing on, um, we will move to the number four spot. Number four, Where the Wild Things Are. Sorry, I'll just find that. This is a really beautiful book. Basically, the plot is a little boy who absolutely loves um, learning about creatures, gets really angry with parents, and runs away to... Um, a magical island full of wild things and at first he's scared of them but it turns out they're really nice and this shows that you shouldn't judge a book by its cover and that it's, sometimes it's really not a good idea to run away because you will be scared out of your mind I thought this was a really beautiful book when I was looking and probably one of my favourites of course the other few books in here I somehow like even more and yeah I may have messed up the counting because yep I almost definitely messed up the counting Okay, here, let's move on. Number three, Good Night Moon. This is a very beautiful book. Basically, the plot is, um, there's not really much of a plot, but it's just, it's really beautiful because there is this boy who's going to sleep, oh god, I'm really not sure. They're going to sleep, and they just say goodnight to heaven. Good night mantle, good night picture of a cow jumping over the moon. It's a really nice, like, rhyming book. And I think that, um, like, it kind of makes you feel like you're ready to go to sleep. But also it kind of makes you feel like a lot of these books are usually read before bedtime they kind of make you feel like safe about going to sleep because the moon's watching over you something that still humps me to this day number two 
The Runaway Bunny. This was an awesome book when I was a little kid, and I loved the plot of it. Basically, the plot is a bunny decides to turn away from home. Sorry about that. Decides to run away from home, and it gets lost and scared, but its mum comes to find it. This is a really nice story about family, love, and care, and it really shows how your how, how your parents are always going to be there for you. Now, just as a quick disclaimer, these are what I think are ten of the best books, not necessarily the ten best. But out of the ones that helped me in my childhood, these were the ten. Um, I will be, and I'm not. None of these are going to be repeated for best books to start reading next week. So, uh, I do have some other great children's books for that too. And number one, the moment you've all been waiting for. In my opinion, the greatest book to read to your child at night is *The Giving Tree*. This is a beautiful book. The plot is a young boy loves this tree, and the tree always gives to him. She gives him a crown, but the boy grows older and needs food, so she gives him apples. The boy needs shade, so the tree gives him shade. The boy needs a boat to sail away. The tree gives him a boat, and years later, when the boy's old, all the boy needs is a stump to sit on. It's a such a beautiful book that really shows how giving does give back to you, and I really recommend this for anyone who wants to read something. Now I have to go now, so hopefully we'll go, or have a dog, wrong channel again, have a reading, writing, or watching other YouTube videos today, ha have a great time, and Owen Williams, out.